Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's yeah? do this. So excited. Guys, this episode is very exciting. This is the Fan Faves episode. Ooh. I asked in the secret Facebook group who you guys wanted me to bring me back. That didn't make sense. I asked in the Facebook group who you guys wanted to hear from again. And these are my most requested, actually. Which is convenient because it's probably the three I would have just brought on because I wanted to. But you guys are the most requested. So do you feel special? Or? Bam, bam, bam. Let's go. I'm honored. Honored. I am so honored. You know I freaking love you guys. So. Dom, this is your third episode, I think. Yes, what? it is. You're now, you're up there. You are tied with Taylor for most episodes. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, Taylor. How many episodes do you have? This is my second one. Oh, same. Let's go. Congrats, Can everyone. I, young Miko like, in the hizzy. you for Twos. a little, for like two seconds? Yeah. Deuces. So, remember when we did the dating I already know which one is coming. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I was on was dating non-negotiables, and that one was... Pretty much just driving Quentin, so... No, 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 no. <laughs> we stopped. I, like, listed off... So this is a funny winners episode. Winners win, you know? Winners win. This I is a funny episode. And at the end of it, you were like... Both... You were like, I hate to describe... Or I hate to tell you this, but you, like, describe Quentin. And I was like, you're so annoying. And then Taylor said that, too. Anyways, that was, like, four or five months ago. Now Moving we're on. And now we're here. Now we're here. So we're going to do, instead of a woman in bio, since we don't have the time for that, we're going to do um, name, where you're from what episode you were on we're all friends from zoe essentially so anyways nico take it away hey what's up i'm nico i'm 27 i'm from albuquerque new mexico and i was on a things we've been learning episode wow that's amazing this is my cast all right dom dominique so my name's dom not don and i'm from arizona um and i'm yeah arizona we love her uh, and then I was on Things We've Been Learning and Dating Non-Negotiables. If you're trying to get in a relationship, listen to that one because... And she's 21. I'm 21. All right. So. Okay. Q, you can go now. Hey, guys. It's Quentin. My friends call me Q. And I'm from right outside of Orlando, Disneyland. Just kidding. Disney World. That's where I'm from. And uh, 24. And the episode I was on was uh, also uh, Things I've Been Learning with My Friends. Shout out to young Nico. Yeah. Different one, though. Different one. Okay, so we're going to do hot seat. These are going to have to be quick. I still have three questions. All right. First one, favorite book and or podcast you've read or listened to in the past six months? Mm. Book and or podcast. Yeah. The just, Truth About Men, Devon Franklin. I love Devon Franklin. I heard that's really good. Bro, it'll change your life. I need to read it. Is it book or pod? That's the a book. book. That's a book. The book, The Truth About Men by Devon Franklin. Fire. Gotta read you it. cannot yeah. read it fast enough. And the podcast, Leadership Lean In, with him is amazing. Leadership. Well. Oh, absolutely. Okay, This Cultural Moment, it's a podcast. It's with John Mark Comer. I literally knew you were going to say this. Bridgetown Church in Portland. Love their church so much. Mm. Yeah. You're going to need to speak up a little bit. I can already tell. That's fine, but I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, it's so hard. I think podcast, I'd go with Leadership Lean In with Jensen Franklin, Pastor Jensen Franklin from um, Free, from Free Chapel from Conference. Yeah, Zoe Conference 2019. Just listen to that one again. But if it was a book, I would have to say How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, Such a great book. flame. You got to read it once book. a year. Yeah, I, no, I just reread it again. I'm like, that's the one. I feel like a dummy. I never read books. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, Enneagram type. Do you know your Enneagram? I do. I just okay. actually took it. Oh, convenient. Okay, let's hear it. I'm going to eat. Stop. I'm an eight. This makes Let's so much go. sense because Wait. you guys are so similar. And Dom and I are three wing twos. Like Let's literally go. exact same. I'm a three wing two. If you guys haven't taken the Enneagram test, you need to take it. I'll have it in the show notes below and then tell us what you are. So a three is the like overachiever. Wing two, that's like our second one is the supporter. Yeah. And then the eight, what is the eight? Eight is a challenger. This is so funny. Yeah, because I actually have a screenshot of it. That's Let's go. amazing. <laughs> Kinsey loves this. Kinsey's almost. A, like, uh, oh I would my say gosh. I would say obsessed with the enneagram. It's like, hi, I'm Kinsey. What's your name? That's Great. What's your enneagram type? Quentin, That's like the next question. This is coming from the guy who sent me, who you send me more enneagram things on Instagram than I send you. I mean, so. let's be real. It's it's pretty lit. You know it's, what I mean? It's it's, it's kind of lit. You it's know? it's a I mean, really good personality that it's a, test. It's a competition, but but I mean, type eight For is Kenzie and type I? eight. The behavior motivation is I must be strong and in control to survive. Yeah. So, it's yeah. pretty lit. It's, I think yeah. that's like the definition of like alpha. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dom, what were you going to say? Your words. Three wing two, though, <laughs> is, for it. is so interesting because when I found out I was a three, it's like you're the overachiever. You want to do well and like strive. Striving's like, and workaholism is like one of the things. 
But then when I found out it was a two wing two, I felt better about myself yeah. because that person's really compassionate and like cares about others. So not so self centered, supportive, supportive, perfect. Yeah, um, that's what awesome. Kenzie and I are, so, exactly. Yeah, I feel really good about my enneagram number. Mm. Okay, last I feel one. Great. Same. What is the highlight of your summer? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm like, Clinton, there's one right answer. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's hear it. Go ahead. I've gone first every time. Oh, oh okay. So we're Ooh, switching, switching it, it up. up. Keep it on your toes. Um, I would probably say, um, I don't know. It was really fun doing, I would just say interns. I was really stretched, and it was just a really fun summer being an intern at Zoe and living in Orange County. Okay, no, I take it back. U.S. Open, Orange County, uh, surfing. I've never seen people surf before. It's a great time. Oh, there you go. She, we were long distance this summer. It was very difficult. We were. It was hard. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Zoe Church Conference because I met a lot of people and life definitely changed. Oh. And I'll leave it at that. Wow, that's a really good answer. Quentin, what's yours? <laughs> so it's, it's a combination. So one, go, one when you said yes to be my girlfriend we became official mm-hmm. but immediately after that two days later at zoe conference i was brought on stage oh my gosh this is not a highlight of your summer it literally can't <laughs> the be the highlight <laughs> the highlight would be, be this uh, a great <laughs> friend a uh, pastor rich Wilkerson jr brought me on stage to help him with an illustration and he asked he's like hey like are you single and i was like well in <sighs> fact i actually just got in a relationship two days ago and so on stage literally in front of everyone about 1200 people and everyone was it was like a standing ovation it was a great moment because we became official and it was just I, it like, just felt right i really did not think that was going to be your highlight i thought your highlight was going to be like job related i did not think that that was going to be it and so i feel like encapsulating zoe conference into all that is like for me job related like it yeah there's a lot of things that fit in there yeah that's what i'm mm. sure that's what quentin meant was just zoe conference and stuff yeah i'm sure just okay all right so we're gonna do things we've learned this summer Dom and I started school again today as we're recording this. So summer's over. We're moving on. We're going to talk about the things we've learned. Who wants to go first? Quentin? Should we switch it up? Quentin is really prepared. When he found out he was doing this episode, he like came with all these points. I've heard them seven times. It's really, really sweet. Like this is just why I freaking love you guys. Like that's how amazing. Praise God. How amazing. Amen. All right. So the first thing I feel like I've been learning – really uh, is is this that obscurity is like an opportunity Mm. i think i've been definitely in a spot where it's like i'm not in the exact place maybe i want to be in and i think there's a lot of people would say like obscurity is like an obstacle but really i feel like if you kind of change your perspective on things it really is an opportunity like it's a chance like when you're not seen and i think when you're not seen it's like man i get to grind on my craft i get to refine my character i get to Maybe I don't have the pressure because when, when you're discovered or seen, there's opportunity but responsibility. Mm. And so when I, I have that weight on me, if I if I get to where I want to be before I'm prepared, then then you might blow your first opportunity and then like you don't get anything else. Wow. Right. So it's very important that so it's like if you're not sharpening yourself when you're not seen, you're not gonna be sharp when you are seen. So it's like I get the chance to like when nobody's seeing me to like to find myself in a place of certainty and like a depth of like an understanding of what I bring to the table, like who I am. Yeah. And in obscurity, it's like, I mean, you can break out different categories of your life, like, like emotionally, relationally, occupationally, like finding yourself in a place where it's just, you're, you're alone really in obscurity, or maybe you're in an environment where you just feel like you're not seen to the capacity where you want to be seen. And so it's like, man, I'm, I'm doing all this extra stuff and I, I know what I bring to the table, but it's like, I get to, put myself in a place where I understand who I am. So when I'm put into a place where people see me or I get an opportunity, like I'm ready, like guns blazing, like obscurity is almost like practice. Yeah. And it feels really hard. And I mean, practice should be harder than the game. Right. So it's like, I need to be preparing myself in a way. I think, who is it? Pastor Christine Kane says like, if the light that's shining on you is brighter than the light that's shining in you, then the light that's shining on you will destroy you. And so it's like, when I'm in this place of like obscurity, it's, literally it's it's exciting because i've got no pressure but it's only it's only me versus myself i only have to impress myself yeah okay which is great because it's like success is literally when hard work and opportunity meet but if you get an opportunity and you haven't put in that hard work before you're not going to find success so i love that point let's go period 
That was great. I've, the Christine Kane quote, I've said on this podcast, I think probably 20 times. Great quote. That's how I knew it was from her. And also in obscurity, I think the healthy habits. Mm. I think if you're in a place where it's like, I'm great, I'm seen, I'm going. Like, if you don't have those healthy habits, quickly you're just going to, like, deteriorate. Like, finding yourself, like, I'm not, I don't have, like, maybe my routine or even, like, like guardrails for success if i don't even have like those things like i know if i do these things i feel better every day wow. if i if i read if i work out if i i know if i'm feeling weird in the morning it's something so small but like if i brush my teeth and shower i, I feel better oh, I'm for sure. yeah. so it's like mm-hmm. so it's like in obscurity you have time to like kind of like self-evaluate and like take that inventory yeah. to be like what's what do i what makes me feel good and what am i going to do like when i'm in those places so like having those guardrails like you get to create those because when you get opportunity, there's less time. Wow, yeah. that's really good. So it's like I, I know who I am and yeah. what kind of makes me feel good and not. So mm-hmm. I can thrive when I'm in that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's so hard to – that's so good because I feel like – especially when you're putting it all out on the line like yourself when you're under that spotlight and pressure – and you're fighting through burnout like oh man i feel like this summer i was just fighting like through burnout like i was so exhausted so depleted and i'm like oh my gosh like i don't even think i can talk to one more person Hmm. and you're like at any second this could literally crash because i'm not taking care of myself Hmm. so i think that is so important that's great great points well plus like the the higher that you get elevated you know the steeper the cliff is mm, so yeah. it's like you got to really Dang. make sure if you pray for elevation you pray to be a leader and, and you're working and aspiring to be that like you do your due diligence beforehand because that the higher it is you know what i mean like the more exposed you are to topple down so like being prepared in in the study um I mean, there's nothing more important and more valuable. It's like your season will come, but you just got to make sure that you're really preparing for when that season hits and that opportunity hits as opposed to like it just coming out of nowhere. Someone told me one time, like, it's either you dug the well or you haven't. So it's like people, you know, you literally on my way here, I'm I'm listening to Jensen Franklin and the sermon's called Dig It. And it's <laughs> about digging the well. That's Let's unreal. Go. I love Jensen. <laughs> He's brilliant. But it's like, yeah, I get there, and it's like it, either you're you've dug that deep well, where it's like I can pull from this, like I'm emotionally healthy, mentally healthy, I'm physically healthy, spiritually healthy, or you haven't. So it's like when you get to that place, what what are you pulling from? Mm-hmm. When you get, it's either like I'm pulling from like a depth, or I'm burning out. Like Dom was saying, like she had all this opportunity, but like it was like this could crash at any moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I feel like, for me, that kind of ties into, like, the drive to the dream should match your drive to do. So be a doer and a dreamer because I feel like so often people are like, I have all these cool ideas. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, I feel like so often I talk to people, especially in L.A., right? Like, people literally move (laughs) out here based off of a dream which is so beautiful like i believe in like the dreamer like i am a dreamer yeah let's go um but to match that you have to have the energy to do and like if you're not getting stuff done you're just talking about the stuff you want to do you're just stuck in that dreamer mentality i think that's a very dangerous place to live in and so i've just like committed Mm. myself to being like okay like i'm a do like I'm not perfect at what I do, but I'm gonna just try and do it and get like feedback and like see how it is. Right. Like, just recently started doing social media for our church, and I'm like, and she's killing it, <laughs> rushing. But I was True. like, oh my gosh, like I kind of don't know what I'm doing, but I do believe that I'm a creative, so mm. I'm just like see what I can do, and I feel like I'm definitely like learning like gifts and like talents about myself and stuff, but that comes with the energy of like doing it, which is like so much harder yeah. than dreaming about it and stuff. But I think that's a beautiful thing is like once we get to that, okay, I'm going to do this, that's where like the beautiful things happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. No, I love. I think at some point when you have a dream, you, ha- you have to find yourself in a place of like, like results-based thinking. Mm. Like I've got this, but how do I – like I know I've decided who I want to be, what I want to do, and like how I'm going to get there and like what I want to be known for, but like – how do I practically get there? And it comes by doing like trial yeah. error and like, you know, like beating on your craft and like mm-hmm. putting yourself in places where maybe I'm uncomfortable, but it's like, it's shaping me. And I need, I need like, 
you learn through failing and you learn through success. So it's like, I just have to get to this place of like results based thinking where it's like, okay, if I do this, I'll get here. Great. That's one step. Then I the next step. That. Then the next step. Yeah. Like at Knox, the company that I work with and am like helping build out in New York, we literally like after every single call, it's what are the action steps? Mm. What are the action steps? And now I've been with them for the last six months or so. And now I get out of just a regular conversation with a friend and I'm like, okay, so actionable steps from this conversation are what exactly? <laughs> because I definitely want you to emote and dream and think and you know, hustle and do everything that you're aspiring to do. But I like it's driven into my mind now, which has become such a blessing for me. Like you're talking about like results, results based thinking, like where, what's the action step? Like we're having this meeting. What's the action step? Right. Like, because if we don't have actionable steps from what we're talking about, then we're literally just talking and don't (laughs) get me wrong. I love to hear you talk and I love to talk, but (laughs) I definitely want some action you know, some actionable steps, some things right. that we can move forward with, even if it's just like, we'll pick back up next week. Like, I'm going to brainstorm mm. on what we just talked about, and then we'll pick back up. Like, give me something. Right. You know what I mean? I like, love that. Give yourself something. Not just like, oh, I want to become X, Y, or Z. And then yeah. you just keep saying, I want to become X, Y, or Z, like, the entire time. Maybe, okay, next week I'm going to set aside some intentional time. Yeah for where I'm going to go with this next. And then ideally it starts to shape and shift into like real life action. So it's not just so much thinking it's more doing. Cause I think every dream or complex idea or even like complex problem, it's always practical steps to solve that problem or to get where you want to go. And one thing that, I mean, I tell Kenzie this all the time that she's so great at, she's got these big goals and dreams that she thinks she wants to accomplish But she always has like act. She literally has everything planned out. It's like not just a lofty dream. And she's like making it a reality because she's like, if I do these small things, small things add up to the big thing. She's like, these little practical steps will lead to this big dream, this complex idea becoming a reality. Yeah. I feel like this perfectly segues into something that's like huge for me right now and something that um, I've really been putting to or just applying more and more this summer. Which like, so I heard this quote earlier this summer and I wrote it down and I just like keep thinking about it all the time because I'm obsessed with like movement and like power and like, okay, so what are like the forces of the earth, like water, you know what Mm. I mean? Like, so the quote is a river cuts through a rock, not by its power, but by its persistence. Because when you think of like a rushing river, you're like, dang, Dang. that thing could like sweep you away. Run that back. What was that? A river cuts through rock. Not by its power, but by its persistence. I love that. And you're just like, yo, like I think about it almost every day and just the idea of little by little. Like Mm. we need to take these steps little by little. Like whether that's like what you talked about earlier, Q, is like preparation. I need to prep for the opportunity. I need to put in this hard work. And although my dreams are lofty or however you want to word it, as big as your dreams are, Hmm. Take the little steps and don't like despise those little steps because a very tiny step in the right direction, even if you take 10,000 tiny little steps, like you're going to get there. Right. So it's not just going to be like by these huge leaps and bounds. And sometimes (coughs) by the grace of God, it will be a huge leap or a bound. Mm. But sometimes it's just going to be these tiny, tiny little steps. And then next thing you know, four or five, ten years down the line. You're going to look and be like, dang, how far I've come. And then it's going to have that situation where you're like, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. Because you're only taking note of the huge steps that you've taken. Mm. But through your persistence and through your faith, like, then you're like, wow, I'm here. Like, I can't believe it. And then your friend, Kenzie, looks at you and is like, are you kidding me? I remember when you literally, like, just were taking it one day at a time. Yeah. And the only way to get to day two of the journey is to get through day one. So I'm not going to sit here and think about day 395 on a journey that, yeah, it might take me two and a half years to become what I'm trying to become. Yeah. But I can only think about what's right in front of me right here, right now, because mm. that's it's not the power. It's the persistence that's going to get me there. Yeah. I, th- I heard somebody one time say people overestimate what they can do in one year and yeah. underestimate what they can do in 10. And when you kind of said 10 years, I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, like some days you're going to go like. Some days it's going to be tough. You go an inch forward. Some days it's like two steps. Some days you're running forward and like you, you feel different weights on different days and maybe you're going farther on one day as opposed to the other. Like you said, 
you know, you usually remember those leaps and bounds, like that big jump that you make, but really it is persistence. Like, it's like, I'm going to make the decision beforehand, before I get all emotional, my feelings get away. I'm going to like, this is what I'm going to be about. And every day I'm going to make, give 100%. And that's going to look different on, on different days. Right. But I'm going to make that decision to like, I'm taking these baby steps, whether it feels like I'm not going anywhere at all, or I feel like I'm just like, light as a feather today like i'm just gonna keep going for it i love that like pers- that that quote is so good yeah let's go for real gets me fired up you know who i i found that quote on the guy uh, that trains john jones his name's brandon gibson i found that quote on his uh <laughs> on his gram on his ig kenzie and i, I literally love look it. at We're each like, other what? <laughs> you're like ah. <laughs> He's Who's dope. that? For the oh, listeners, yeah. who for is For the that? listeners, John Jones is the UFC lightweight champ right now. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, and no, I did it. his trainer... <laughs> right, right. His tra- so he trained in Albuquerque. Shout out to my hometown. But his trainer, I like, was like, yo, this dude looks like super familiar. <laughs> Come to find out that he was like the uh, lifeguard at like my child pool what? growing really? up. Mm. And now he's just training like the most, like the pound for pound, arguably. For the listeners out there that are UFC fans, arguably, and I'm not the one arguing. It's Kenzie and I. We're but arguably, arguing. the best fighter in, in the world right now. In the now. world. Whoa. Man. Those that's are fighting a, that's words. A good quote. Actual fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> Actual. <laughs> I turned into yes. Quentin. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Quentin is Here shocked that he didn't get it out first. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Actually. That's brilliant. Okay. It's crazy that we're talking about. I mean, I guess it's not we're all friends, but my. I think my biggest thing this summer has been a lot of like self-discipline and routines and I say this all the time. I actually Amanda Madu said this to me like probably six months ago but it's patterns over potential. So like mm. you look at people who have bars. It's I mean everyone says it. Let's but, go Amanda Madu though. Right? I, I love Amanda. Yeah she's a she's ledge. The best. But like even if you look at just people the person okay I've explained this and this is not really the best way to describe it but the people who are naturally really athletic versus the people who are driven and are gonna go after it. People who are naturally really athletic with no drive, eventually the people who are driven are gonna like pass them oh, yeah. because they're practicing, Facts. they're spending mm. more time, they're doing whatever. And I think that like translates into just who we are as people. Like people can have a lot of potential naturally, but if you're not like creating routines and creating habits and like working on that and like owning it on your craft and all of that stuff, like you're never you're, everyone else is going to pass you, yeah. you know? So it's like, even in, like, that was one of the first conversations. I mean, not one of the first conversations we'd known each other for a while, but that was like one of the first things we were talking about. It's like habits in people. Like if you're like getting close with friends and you are who you're surrounding yourself with, like watch their habits and watch what yes. they're spending their time, so how they're important. spending their money, like just things like that actually add up. Yeah. And it's like yeah. your life. What, what Nate said this earlier and I was thinking about this the other day, but your life doesn't change I think until your daily routine does so Mm -hmm. it's like you think about that like there's certain things that I have to do every single day I work out six days a week normally five six days a week it's like constantly reading I there's certain podcasts that I listen to there's certain like people that I really try to see like there's just certain things that I think are really important and I think also on top of that this summer it's been kind of recognizing that like obviously you're not gonna have the same routine forever so it's like what are things that i need to change and what are things that i need to add and take away and like not necessarily that they're good or bad it's just like i'm in a different place and that's not necessarily what i need to be focusing on now yeah Yeah. you know well it's like we talked about on the episode that i was with you uh last time was you you sow a habit you reap a lifestyle you sow a lifestyle you reap your destiny you know and Mm. so you just got to keep sowing into that whatever it is but I love the idea of like constantly like optimizing the routine yeah and being like okay right now this is really crushing it for me uh maybe in six seven months it's not but if you're in a routine like that and kind of doing those those healthy self-inventory checkups like the routine's gonna change naturally yeah you know what I mean you're not gonna right ho- ideally you don't get to a place where you're like dang I'm really stuck this is really broken like I need to really change this yeah um because you're just so tapped in with yourself. Yeah. I think, I mean, for me, like, I mean, yes, routines always change, but maybe the components don't. Like, I know I got to work out. I know I got to read. I know I got to be seeing a mentor. Like, whatever that looks like for me. Like, I had certain things that I know I'm like, I have, if I'm going to be successful in this period of time or this block of the year or this this quarter or this season, like, I, there are certain things I know, the certain components that have to be there. So it's like, always have guardrails, but it's like, you know, if I have class, 
at 9 a.m. I know I can't do a work at, at 9 a.m. anymore. Like, I'd have to adjust and maybe do earlier or yeah, in the like afternoon. Yeah, like, how you do it changes. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think, yeah, for sure. Because if you can't take those changes well, you'll get, like, crushed. Crushed. As soon as your routine gets jacked up and you don't do, like, immediate actions to fix it, you will get, like, crushed hard. Like, I think, yeah, I think that's even, like, what happened to me this summer, just moving so much and then being like Arr. oh yeah you spent all summer in oc right yeah i was so like far away so far <laughs> I was from like, everything literally no, really it, it literally was two I hours literally away i literally can't tell how sarcastic you're being right now <laughs> you're like oh so far no no, no, no but seriously it was, they were driving far. 50 miles 53 miles in no you reset on, that routine and you stay down there <laughs> yeah you just stay <laughs> down yeah in OC. i'm like yeah but except it's, for Sundays. Except, yeah. but, except for Sundays. Yeah, I don't know. It jacked me up so bad because you're like trying to fix your life and then you get a routine and then three months later I'm like moving back. So I kind of just had to accept the fact that the summer was going to be a jacked up one. But I think like, yeah, I think that's so beautiful. The routines and like fixing it immediately. Not like, okay, let's see how this goes. But like being like, okay, we need to fix this. RN. I think there's today. also smaller things in your life too not smaller things, but there's certain things in your life that you can, like, control in a healthy mm, way. Yeah. So it's, like, for me, I, like, I know when I'm off track and I know why. It's, like, I haven't read in four days or I haven't worked out or, like, there's certain things that really set me off. But it's, like, I know in order to, like, be my best self and, like, my best, like, the best friend that I can be and the best, like, whatever at my job. Like, what, I don't, like, what, I don't even know what to call myself. Whatever. Um... Like, these, there's certain things that, like, I have to do in order to, like, be my best self and in order to go. Like, if I have a goal, it's the same thing. It's, like, I'm so goal-oriented. I was she born is. that way. Like, even with Dom earlier, she was talking about, like, wanting to do something else job-wise. And I was, like, let's just sit down for an hour. Like, I can, like, figure this out. It's, like, I'm very goal-oriented. So I feel like I've always thought that way. But it is, again, like, the small things that are going to lead you to, like, the big thing. Even now, it's, like, I started all this, like, five, six years ago, you know? And it's, like, it's only, like, gotten bigger. And at times, it's grown way faster. And at times, it's, like, really plateaued. And it's, like, in the times that I was kind of annoyed that it was plateauing, I'm so glad now that it did, like, at that time. Because it's, like, I look back and I see, I'm, like, okay, well, if it would have kept growing or blown up at that time, like, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. So Mm. it's, like, and I know that now like I look back and I'm like I wasn't doing the things one that I should have been doing but also like I wasn't like disciplined enough I've always been disciplined with work but there's a difference between like being disciplined with work and being disciplined and like your growth as like a human being Mm. and taking care of yourself and I wasn't doing that then so if I would have had that then it all would have like crashed and crumbled so I don't want to get to a point where I had this like amazing opportunity and I'm not ready for it. So I think it's like always, I feel like especially this summer was like a big like season of preparation. We talked about like Nico and I talked about that on our podcast and Quinton and I talked about it all summer. But also I think that you should always kind of live your life like in order, like stay ready so you don't have to get ready kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, out of preparedness. Yeah. I mean, it's just like I literally just got this tattooed the other day, but Romans 8, you know, it's like all things are working together for the good, Mm. you know, and so... Romans eight twenty eight to be specific, but oh, big um, <laughs> huge. No, it's actually just like my face. I literally just got it tattooed. Oh, oh it's love fresh. it! Yeah, it's super. Where'd fresh. you get it tattooed at? Shameless plug. Stop. I don't even know his name, but he was really dope. Um, <laughs> Great. I'm sure you love that just now. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> let's, let's cut that out. <laughs> Uh, I think his name was Alex. I don't know. <laughs> like you were. He's like anyways, really stressed just him out. Stop. Good job. Just stop. But. uh <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, like I remember being young and like, I mean, I'm still young. I remember being, being a lot younger young and um, like managing Gatto, for instance, like my mentor at the time, I remember I was like 19 or 20 and Gatto was like 16 or 17. And we were like, yo, he had just opened up for Mac Miller, rest in peace. And was like, we were like, oh, we're ready to blow up. Mm. And my mentor was like, y'all are literally not so far from being ready. And we were, I remember being, like, livid. I'm like, how could you ever say that? Like, mentor, like, this guy's not for us, you know? And then (laughs) now, like, looking back and, like, just seeing where we're at now and seeing where I was mentally then, 
like, bro, I would have been destroyed. So would have, so would, you know, like both of our lives would have literally gone down the drain. Mm. So all, like all of the seasons come for a reason, you know, yeah. great. and it just all works together for the good. So whether you're in that lull, you're plateauing, feels like you're chilling, feels like maybe even in a way you're digressing, like first off, you're not, you're not digressing. That's the enemy just trying to get, get in your head real quick. Right. Sit at your, you know a little seat at your table and just whisper in your ear. But <laughs> shout out to Pastor Louis. Oh my goodness, yes, of course. But yeah, like you just got to keep on with it no matter what, and just understand that like this is meant. This is exactly how it's meant to be. Right. Yeah. And just working, like, so just stay in it and working on those habits. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think Kinsey would have been ready. She wasn't doing hot Pilates five years ago. I just <laughs> exactly. Oh Clinton, you just get my. it. That's her latest yeah. crisis. I don't even think Orange Theory was a thing at that time. Hot wasn't. Pilates, not Orange Theory. She's, yeah, you were, she's, or you were, she's very, I know, I was an Orange Theory girl for a bit. She's very stressed right now because not only am I, but Morgan and TK are all okay. leaving on a trip for a few days. For and, 10 days. And Hot Pilates is closing. For, for six what? of those days. For six of those days. So yeah. she's like, do you want me to are do they remodeling or what? Actually, yes. <laughs> oh, I was like, how do you just so close her your routine, business for six days? She's like, I don't even know what I'm going to do. You're Kenzie? gone. And well, like, thank God God moved back to LA. It's you and me against the world. God knew. Get ready. And God's you know plan. what? It's so funny. She theorize with the orange. <laughs> My roommate now, she is literally like the skinniest legend known to man. Like she literally eats broccoli and chicken. <laughs> and like, Whole30, like next she's week. doing Whole30. I moved back in. She, my roommate's the kind of girl that will send you a spreadsheet of oh. like when to use the bathroom. Like it's brilliant. Actually though. And she was like, she sent me like four workout go, plans. Like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, it, it just, she's proving a point. Anyways. <laughs> What I'm saying is, Kenzie, we're still going to be skinny. It's great. Thank God. I feel good about it. Quentin, you can leave. You can be a quitter. Yeah. Oh. Kenzie, I'll, I'll never quit on you. Just okay. this summer. Well, let's Thank not you. speak that over my brother's life. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? He's a winner only. It actually is so Eight. weird how similar you guys are. Even in the mic, sometimes you guys sound the same. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, there's no that's one I talk to more than Quentin. I love, and I'm like, I love Nico so much. I receive it. I love him too. So well, I love Kenzie. Things, so, bromance. Yeah, I'm like, oh, we're the same Enneagram. So fine. <laughs> yeah, that actually. And so are we. Yeah. And so are we. Yeah, I love it. To go back to what Nico was saying, with plateauing, it's also like in the times that I plateaued, there were like really significant either life events or things that were added or taken from my life or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and in those times, like I always, I say this all the time to people, but I'm like, there's not one single relationship that I no longer have in my life that I like still wish that I had. So like, there's no like friends that I, what am I trying to say? I don't know how to phrase this. There is no friendship or opportunity that I no longer have in my life that I still wish that I had. So things that used to be really important to me or things that I really thought I couldn't live without that were not for me, that I thought would, like, break my heart and, like, I would never, like, this is exactly what I wanted to do, whatever. I'm so glad it didn't work out now because I'm, like, I, there's, like, job things that were really, really big and really cool, but I'm glad that it didn't happen because of, like, now I'm in the program that I'm at and I wouldn't be there and that would not have been my first pick, but I'm so much happier there and it's, like, that is, like, building my foundation for, like, a way bigger future that I couldn't even, like, p- like picture, you know mm. what I'm saying? So there's nothing that... I no longer have that I still wish that I had, you know? Wow. Yeah. Well, it's like your steps are laid out for you, you know what I mean? Like, we, we like, always pray for things and wish for things, and then they don't happen. And then exactly, like, six months later, maybe even, like, five years later, you're like, dang, I'm so glad that that didn't happen. Because right. then I wouldn't have right. what I have now, which is a thousand times better yeah. than what I was wishing for and maybe cried myself to sleep for. You know what I mean? Mm. And being like, dang, this didn't happen. Why? Yeah. Two years later, you're like, thank you. I'm right. so glad that didn't Hindsight. happen. It's also like the whole concept of not settling. So like... Bi- Heard that. <laughs> so like business-wise, <laughs> especially, there's... Obviously, you get a lot of offers and you get a lot of like... I've been like without... I mean... No, no longer. But like, I've been without a manager for like a long time, and like to do all this without a manager this year has been like awful. It's been good, but it's really, really difficult. But it's like now I'm in a place where I'm so glad I didn't take this just because it was offered to me and it sounded like a good idea. Like for the first time, the manager that I was with before, I just signed to sign because I was like, I can't do this on my own. 
the company that I was with prior to that had just dissolved. I was like, I'm starting. It was when I was starting ZLC. Mm. It's like, I can't do all of this. Like, I need to sign with someone. I signed with someone who a lot of people told me not to sign with. And, like, a lot of, like, I knew that it was a bad idea, but I still did it because I was like, I just don't have the time to even, like, manage my inbox right now. Like, there's just too much going on. So I signed, and that was a really awful, awful mistake. And then I'm sitting with management, like, after I dropped them. And, like, even from, like, income, like, I should have made, they're, like, this is what you should, you what you made, and this is what you should have made this wow. year. And it's, like, I it's, like, actually a disgusting amount more. Like, just crazy that that didn't Dang. happen. And it was also, it just, like, nothing lined up with, like, my vision at all, mm. right? So, it's, like, I signed to sign, and I just, like, took this opportunity, and I just did this. Because it was, like, what was easier, and it was what was presented to me. So, this time, I was very extreme. And I was, like, there's no way I'm going to, like just settle or sign like they have to like see the vision completely they have to be like this like there's like all these like qualities that I was like it has to be this and like I'm not settling for anything less you're non-negotiables yeah non-negotiables so it took like <laughs> Shout out to Dom. it took like eight months the, Quentin like somehow makes this about himself. <laughs> um no but it took like eight months but it was worth it in the long term you know yeah. it's like thinking long term versus short term anyways yeah. mm. This is great. I'm that loving all this. Good. We're just um, are we going to the next point? The yeah. next round? Next, next round. round. Round two. Deuces two. Second second time we're on the podcast. Two. Deuces. Are One. you guys going to start rapping? They said oh. in the group message that they're going to start rapping. This oh. is so no. <laughs> <laughs> they're not ready for Nico's these bars. Nico's all talk. I'm pretty sure Nico's the one who like brought that up, but okay. No. Nico's got bars Quentin so sweet definitely. they call them candy bars. <laughs> Candy bars. They call him Willy that's Wonka. Mars bars. This is, that's, this is I should have not brought this Wonka. up. I was the one who didn't want this. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> crow bars. They'll probably Crow-hoo. leave your dome broke. Ooh. Like, how Keep many going? kids do y'all have? Bars, <laughs> like, going, <laughs> literally. bars going crazy. Penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> bars killing them dead. Kenzie. Cemetery. I'm just kidding. They don't want to do you want to get a sweet green? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's your um, man. <laughs> we're just in here two hours later still coming up with things about bars. We're like, bars. <laughs> Actually, I mean, here's the deal: is I manage Gatto and I let him do the rapping. Yeah, you smart. I understand I mean? that. Smart. That's what I mean, but imagine this being my daily that I life. Could happened. Kill you could the do track. it. Oh, make no okay. mistake. His name is Young Nico. That's, oh. He's ready to go at any time. Guys, but I just want to set the scene. We're in Big Bear. It's April. Quint, we're having a talent show. <laughs> this is so good. Dom is actually hosting it. I'm hosting it. Yes, Quentin comes out. Nico, this is a real story, and I have a video, so yes, I will send it to you immediately oh, after. There, I'm There's posting this evidence. on my IG story immediately. You're going to want to. First off, his hair has never been longer. Never. It's, like, way longer than this. It's, it like, was so, so, so long. long. So he long. starts rapping freestyle by freestyle. the name of Young Spider. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, like, messed no, it up. Because my last name's him. Webb, right? So no, Young got Spider it. Webb. <laughs> But I think I called him like Webby or something. Like that. Yo, Webby is an actual rapper. The he d- is. Oh. But I put was some just, respect on it. I like oh. no respect on, on his name. <laughs> None. Whoa. I. It was really, Whoa. like, it was just really something. This is my everyday life. Also, I will say, Quentin and I are probably the amount of double dates we get asked to go on daily. We're very prideful about this, but it's, it's a lot. It's on the up and up. Yeah. It's exponentially increasing. It's exponentially increasing. But you should see the latest group message. It's really good. I'll show you guys after. But anyways, I will not comment. I'm on not even said situation. We, but that's we're ta- very I'm dope. talking about. <laughs> you know what? I'm talking about other friends of ours. Everyone's starting. Maybe dating. not in the stew. Currently not with but us. Maybe currently right now. not here for sure. <laughs> but they're great. Um. So second point, it kind of like it really does kind of fit in with what everybody's been kind of saying, like healthy habits what young Nico was saying about persistence young Nico guys and Dom was saying about you know not only dreaming but doing and I think what I was kind of wanted to piggyback off my first point as well it's kind of focusing on certainty and like Mm. a confidence that kind of comes from being persistent and maybe Uh out of a maybe a season of obscurity maybe when you're not doing what you want to do yet like you get that that I think confidence is key but like healthy confidence like I've got a certainty in like you know, when this opportunity comes, I, I do bring this to the table. I'm confident in what I can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I've, well. I've tested, I've trialed it, I've failed a lot. But I know based on this time when nobody was watching and doing, you know, practicing when nobody was watching, you know, reading those books, doing those podcasts, prepping yourself, 
those those hours and there's a book i still haven't read it yet but it's called Ten Thousand hours yeah. it, oh, it talks about the concept that john like, maxwell i don't know if it's john maxwell but it's like you know the outliers in, or whatever in order to be no, out, outliers is a different book but Ten Thousand hours is like the Ten Thousand hours of mastery so yes but that's based in order to, outliers is like on that concept right oh maybe no. john maxwell's brilliant i'm not sure but uh, outliers is a book that basically describes that you are in the exact situation that you're supposed to be and there's different it's we'll talk about it after Great. but the, the concept is just like in order to master something you have to put at least a minimum of ten thousand hours in it you got to mm-hmm. beat on your craft you have to like refine it and sharpen it but i think and really what i want to like, kind of touch on is like out of if you're uncertain you're gonna lead people into uncertainty wow so it's like if i'm not if, if i'm leading even like relationally in a relationship if you're not certain in like who you are what your values are your relationship is going to be of just a bunch of gray areas and like uncertainty in your job like if i want to manage somebody if i'm uncertain about the vision or how to expand on someone's vision or, or how to go about a meeting or create action steps there's just going to be so much uncertainty and a bunch of lofty dreams and no action, no practical steps to get there. So if I'm not, if I don't have healthy habits and I'm not certain in like, you know, vision or what I bring to the table or how to communicate things, like I'm just going to lead everyone into uncertainty and, and you're just going to like spiral out. But, um, because really you do approach things differently when you do have a certainty, right? Like I approach, I approach going into a meeting differently if i'm well prepared like if i know or i or a speaking opportunity or if i'm a singer i'm gonna approach a concert or differently if i've prepared if i have a certainty like oh like i'm good i've put in the hours Mm. so there's something about just like simply like whether you've got the talent or not just like beating on your craft going over and over and over again and like knowing what you're gonna do before you're doing it and like i was kind of saying earlier like practice should be hard to than the game. And I was talking with a good friend. His name's uh, Luke Marchesani, one of my favorite guys in the world. He's over at Southeastern University. And we would, during preseason for soccer, we'd be doing the most intense workouts. Like one of the trainers is like, he uh, is, is a really well known, like athletic sports trainer. And he came in to kind of help us with conditioning. We we're doing all these workouts. And even like we were doing sometimes three times a day. And one of the things we were doing was this thing that's at the Lake Hollingsworth. And this little thought I had is like Lake Hollingsworth has its worth. So we're going and like soccer is like really not <laughs> I like love, a, I love it, bro. Like it's not like an it is an endurance sport, but it's a lot of sprints. People people think it's long distance, but really it's like twenty yard sprints over and over and over again. It's really like a power sport. But Lake Hollingsworth is it's three miles and you have to run it for on the soccer team is like under twenty minutes. So we're literally doing just sprints all day and then we get to this lake. I'm like, we're not gonna be running nonstop really for twenty minutes. It's like you it's you're sprinting and you're walking and like the ball goes out of bounds. It's all this different stuff, but it's like it's a mental fortitude thing. It's like it has its worth because like in doing this, like in practice, like I'm gonna be ready for the game mentally, like physically, emotionally, when I feel drained and I'm upset, why am I running this lake? It's literally ninety eight degrees outside. 100% humidity. It's Florida. 100%. Nothing 98 like 98 degrees, Nick Lachey. Nick, <laughs> Nick Lachey. Praise God. Um, but, like, but it. out of doing that, I had, like, a certainty. Like, when I get in the game, I'm ready. Like, I'm going to be mentally strong because, yeah. like, in this practice, like, I'm not necessarily going to be – when I, I'm not going to be this exhausted during a game. No. Like, at all. No chance. And so it's, like, like it has its worth. So when you're in these things when, like, you're in obscurity or you're you're doing these – like first steps of I've never done social media before and maybe you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and you're like I have no idea how to do this. this is really stressful and like you're kind of frantically figuring these things out it has its worth because like at the end of the day like when you're doing what you want to do creatively you're going to have like this kind of confidence of like I've done things and made it happen when I didn't know what to do or I made this lake running around it in 20 minutes when I didn't know if I had anything left in the tank mm-hmm. so it's like those those things that maybe you overlooked like maybe they don't have like as much value like it does like those like i think in jeremiah 12 5 talks about if you get tired running with men then you're not gonna be able to keep up with men running on horses you know what i mean so it's like everything you're doing preach (laughs) everything you're doing now is literally preparing you for what it's for and like i'm not gonna like preach and go into that but like that guy that character in the bible like literally wouldn't have been able to do what he was gonna do in the four different cities i was going to afterwards had he had not been able to do what he what god had in front of him right there yeah yeah so it's like like what you're doing matters lake hollingsworth has its worth 
practice Dude, has its worth. That's literally work. so crazy. Because my second point was talking about being uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. And like Nate <laughs> talked about it today, but this whole entire summer, pretty much ever since I took on our social media, I've been uncomfortable. Like I've just <laughs> there's been days where I've literally just like sat in my room and like literally sat at the edge of my bed and been like I've dropped so many balls. Mm. Like I would get text after text after text being like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, to the point where they would literally call me and be like, Dom. Dang. And I was like, and I remember um, this is like one time and I was at work. So I'm like working, trying to like do social media stuff. And then I get a call and they're like, Dom, like, we, like, let's talk. We need to fix this. Da 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 da. Mm. And I remember just literally being like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I suck at this. This is horrible. I'm not doing a good job. And then I just, like, took a second and I was like, okay, no. I'm fine. Mm. It was a bad day. And you're uncomfortable. You know nothing. I know. I knew literally zero about social media. I, like, literally put no filters on my photos. Like, (laughs) nothing. And I just think that everything you do is worth being uncomfortable for it is so worth wow. being uncomfortable because one day you'll be comfortable. And there is, there's literally been times where I'm like, I just want to go back to the old team that I was on where I know everyone, know how to do everything, would literally crush it. Like, could you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm just like, there's no power in that, though. There's no beauty in a transformation when I'm doing something that I'm comfortable in. Mm. I think, like, this position, even though it is, like, so challenging for me, it is like the beauty of knowing that like eventually there will come a day when I will be better at this. I will be more organized. I'll be yeah. more prepared. And I would say like even close to mastering, probably not though, because you can never <laughs> master social media. But I think that there's just something with like going after something so uncomfortable. It's so hard. Like that yeah. lake has its worth, but like it's worth being uncomfortable for. And mm. I think that for you if it's not being if it's not worth being uncomfortable you need to stop right now like if you like really like you're like this is not my jam this is not it i don't see a light at the end of the tunnel i don't see the doors that this is opening like you're just doing it for the sake of doing it stop Mm. but if there's a passion behind it if there's something a little voice in your head that's telling you okay I know this seems crazy. I know you know nothing about this. But if you just keep going, keep pushing through all the L's, keep pushing through all the harsh whatever, like there is something beautiful Mm. at the end of this. And that is the only reason why I've been able to stay and try and like build this team and like create like cool stuff and whatever. And like even like editing, I was like telling Kenzie, that's like something that I really found out that I like love so much. But I'm like, I don't even think I would have found out that I love that if I didn't, like, stick through this. Right. Yeah. You know? So, like, being uncomfortable is so important. I love that. 100%. It's like she's on her big Sean. Last night took an L. But tonight I bounce back. Tonight oh, my God. I love that mental I, I love fortitude. She yeah. Back. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> big Sean quotes. I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I am I'm, I'm can just go out and, on a limb and say this, like, for right now for a fact, Dom. Um, you're going to get to a point sooner than you think where you're crushing this and you're comfortable and you're in a flow and then you're going to get called to your next moment and then you're going to find a whole new thing that's (laughs) going to make you uncomfortable and you're going to be like dang what is this and then this moment that you're in now should be your testimony of being like well dang i already got like i remember when i took over social media and it was terrible and i felt like i can't do this anymore and i felt like I was taking L's and getting beat down and I just didn't want to do it. And then boom, X boom. amount of time later, I was crushing it. Now I feel so good sitting in this. And then you're going to get called to something else. And then you'll be like, okay, word. Well, if I can get through that. So I just encourage <coughs> you to like remember this moving forward with like every lesson because you're going to get called higher and higher to different and different. Like, you know what I mean? That's how it goes. Because when, and I'm only speaking that from like straight experience particularly yeah. like even within our community like when we first launched zoom production boom team is crushing it i mean at first i mean it took a while to get there 
So it's like, okay, year and a half in, we're like a well-oiled machine. I'm feeling great. We've got leads on leads. We've got like co-leads under leads. And I'm yeah. like, dang, this is so great. And then it was like, hey, let's take over load in and load out. And I'm like, like that's literally what I did. I was like, oh my goodness. So For the listeners, he was just stale-faced, blinking, just disbelieving. Then, We're a mobile church, so that's like you have to be there at what, 4.35? Like, it was like 6 a.m. and yeah. then like literally. 11 p.m. And, yeah. and then it was just like two of us. I remember the first time I did it, it was raining. And it was just me and James. Shout out to James. What a legend. Shout out. And... Um, we actually have the same birthday. Just need to throw that out there. That's James Joe. And I. I mean, you guys same are both day, legends. Same month. Same time, same hour. Same mom. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Twins. Whoa. You guys look very different. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying that. So I'm adopted. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, we're going to. Okay, <laughs> we're going to cut this off. Uh, we're going to reel it in. So then, then, like, I literally got to a point where I was talking to a mentor at the time where I'm like, I, I can't do this. Like, talk about like no light at the end of the tunnel mm. like no i'm done like i cannot do this and then it was like just stick in there just stick in there just stick in there next thing you know like i'm two and a half years deep i love the team like i can't imagine leaving it well oil machine feeling great and then it was like okay right on like right on up to the to what's next yeah and i was literally just having a conversation about this the other day with someone that i'm really close with like it just doesn't stop, which is beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't say that in a discouraged way. I say that like hyped, like it just doesn't stop because through all of those moments, I've just been like tested and shaped and perspective shifting and all of these different moments. And I know that like w- where I'm at now, we're going to get there. It might take two years. And then as soon as we get there and I'm like in that place mm-hmm. of comfort, boom, it's going to happen again. Yeah. And now instead of like fearing it or like avoiding it, that's actually what I'm gunning for is like, let me get this thing to be so fire and so comfortable that now I have to enter into like a new place of uncomfortability. Yeah. Because like expanding the temples, if it was easy to be great, everybody would be great. Right. You know, I I feel like life doesn't, ever get like easier i feel like your capacity just grows and you learn to adapt you learn how to learn you like you have systems for things right and it's like okay and you kind of get like a timetable for okay if i just like you know you take what you learn you bring into the next season but like as you grow in your business like relationally friends all these different things more opportunity more responsibility comes and it's like really you're like you have the most time you ever have right now like, it's only going to get busier. You're only going to have more things to do. But I feel like you just feel, you you learn, you adapt, you get more capacity, you learn how to be more efficient with things, and you learn how to, like, this, oh, this worked over here, and now I'm super uncomfortable here, but I know that it took kind of, like, this amount of time, so it's like, I just need to give myself grace for this moment, and just, like, relax a little bit, and kind of just, like, be persistent with it, instead of wanting it, like, right now. Like, I'll be persistent with it, but, like, your capacity grows to be like, okay, I can handle this, I've done it before, I'm going to, like, do it again, but I just got to give myself, like, grace to grow and, like, kind of, like, relax on it a little bit. Yeah. Nobody really likes being uncomfortable, though. It's actually, like... I hate it, but That's the worst. I'm learning to love it. I'm yeah. learning to love... I feel like I'm in a good place when I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. It took me this week because I was having, like, <laughs> no light at the end of the tunnel. Like, I was moving all my stuff, and I was literally, like, I need help. Like, I can't do this anymore. I literally am so tired. Like, I I don't know what to do. And I was talking to my friends, and they're like, if you hate it so much, like, just go. That sounds like Satan, because that's what that was. No, yeah. I'm just <laughs> but like, like, if they're like, if you hate it so much, like, just, just leave. And then it just took me just some time to be like, no. Mm. Yeah? No. Because you were called to it. That's why you were put there. And I was just like, no, I'm going to stick this through. Sticking something through is, like, one of the hardest things to do. Everyone in our generation has commitment issues, I think, like, sticking with something. And I was like, I'm just going to stick with it. It's going to be so hard. There's going to be a thousand more conversations, but I'm just going to keep pushing through, and I know something great is going to happen, you know? Yeah, Yeah, the endurance that it's going to build in you is, like... Invaluable. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, like, my old mentor used to always say this to me. It's, like, the more out of your comfort zone that you are, the closer you are to being who you're supposed to become, Nico. So, like, stop 
coming here and like wanting to do this was in dance so i was like i joined this company based off of like my hip-hop dance love like my passion for hip-hop and like my skill for that style of dance and then i got into the company and it was like monday nights we do ballet tuesday nights we do contemporary friday nights we do tumbling i'm like fam that's not what i'm gonna do i'm trying to go you got served every <laughs> night i did not know this about you oh yeah. okay yeah it's my it's Here we are. part of my past <laughs> Let's go. Um, Let, i need videos <laughs> It'll we'll be in the it secret. Later. It'll be in the secret Facebook group. The vault. For that's sure. a great plug. Thank you, Quentin. Wow, let's go. So, anyways, it's just like being uncomfortable, like never shy away from being uncomfortable, because that's what's gonna like pull that growth out of you. For me, and- I always think about when I like started at ZLC, which I reference this all the time, but it's because it's like made such an impact in my life. But that was the last thing that made sense for me at the time. That was the last thing that like anyone would have thought I would have done. I would have even thought I would have done, but I just like knew that that's what I was supposed to do. And that was like a very giant leap of faith to go do that. And it was like the best decision ever. And there's so many things that have come from that and like are still coming and will probably for the rest of my life. But I always think like, I never want to miss something like that again, ever. And I feel like so often it's like out of fear of being uncomfortable Mm -hmm. or it's out of fear of change or fear of like, this wasn't what I had envisioned, you know? And it's Mm. like, obviously there's like a better vision than like my vision, but it's like things that I've just missed because of like the fear of being uncomfortable because it was something that made me like uncomfortable in every area of my life. Like not even just like school. It was just like, it changed everything. And I'm like, I never want to miss, I don't want to miss it. So like that, every time I'm like taking a step or thinking about something, like that's always what comes to mind because I'm like, I see what's come out of that. And it's like, I know, I know like that I know that I should do that, you Mm -hmm. know? Also, if you, if you're doing something like maybe this isn't like end goal for you, like if you can have the endurance in that and embrace that and embrace the uncomfortability in that and like kind of like love it. You know, like when you get to where you want to be and you're doing what you want to do, you're going to have that endurance, but you're going to be excited about, you know, being there and doing that thing. So if you can find that, like, I'm committed to this, maybe it's not what I want to do, but it's like where I'm at. So I'm going to make this excellent. When you get to where you're going to be, where you want to go and what you want to do, like you're going to, it's going to feel like so much lighter because like, this is what I want to do. I love doing this. I don't feel like, like I hate this, Yeah. you know? And like, I think we're, I think I was talking to Kinsey about this because she's doing both like. The business side and the creative side right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she loves the business side, but she's the only one who could do the creative side. But it's like mm-hmm. she's learning and like doing a lot of things, doing both sides right now. But like soon she'll be when just she signs. Creative. with yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Which, so it's, but then she'll just thrive more when she's in a management structure. Exactly. Because she'll have to be able to inform the vision exactly. even clearer. Boom. Bringing it back to Quinton's point for our last point to wrap this up. I don't really even remember what you said, but I was going to say this and then I didn't, but it's something like the thought, and I feel like this actually, I changed my point to this, so, um, but it's like just because it feels right, does or just because it feels good doesn't mean it's right, so there's a lot of things, it kind of also wraps, like goes back into my last point, but there's so many things it's like you can take this opportunity you can like date this person you can like be friends with this people go into this group go to this school but it's like just because it feels right doesn't mean it's good and I think because of like learning that I've kind of I will like overthink things and I'm more focused on what if I make the wrong decision than like okay there's like this miracle coming and like breakthrough and there's like this amazing um like opportunity coming I'm more focused on being afraid of taking like the wrong step. But I think Mm. in order to be able to discern what you're supposed to do, it goes back to everything that we've been talking about. So it's like staying in your habits, growing in your routine to where you're able to have like a clear mind and you're able to think clearly and you're not coming from a place of, I'm so burnt out, I'm just gonna do this because this is what's here and it feels good. Yeah, There's a lot of things in life that are gonna feel good, but it doesn't mean that it's like what you should be doing or what is right for you. So it kind of like, I honestly, like everything that we've talked about, it's like working on yourself and growing and making sure that you're in the right headspace so that when the opportunity does come, you're able to like discern if that is the right one. Yeah. You know? I love that because literally the w- one of the last things I wrote down was the idea of like people always talk like, is it the like right way versus wrong way? But really, to me, it's right way versus the easy way. 
Yeah. Is like, mm. generally speaking, like That's taking the easy way out is not the right way. So right. when you're talking about like it feels good, easy things feel good. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's like, mm. gen- it's like you're going to have to do it the right way eventually. Like if you want to get there, you're going to have to do it the right way. And in, I'm still super young, but in the 27 years that I've lived, I have not crossed a bridge to this day that the right way was the easy way. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? And in fact, going said air quotes easy way ended up becoming the harder way and the wrong way because yep. then I still had to backtrack or like go in this huge circle roundabout to get to the right way. So you're mm. like, oh, this is the easy way. It must be the right way. Then you take the easy way, the wrong way, have to circle, backtrack, makes it way harder, delays everything. Yeah, stunts your growth. To then finally get to the right way. So you're like, dang, actually, just taking it like on the chin at the beginning and just going with like the right way is going to get you there quicker and is going to shape you to be the person that you're supposed to be. So don't try to avoid by going the easy way. It's like you're talking about, like you have to be in that headspace of like, all right, I need to just like make the right decision, even though this is so hard, like cutting a certain relationship, declining a certain job offer, you know what I mean? Whatever it may be, you're like, dang, I know I have to do this, but it's gonna be so hard. Don't fear what it looks like on the outside. Like just take that thing head on because it'll end up being easier in the long run. Yeah. Mm. Great job, guys. That's good. Um, uh, okay, let's quickly, where can they find you guys? Nico, do you want to start? You can find me on Instagram at Nico G. Ivanoff. I'll have it in the show notes. Dom. Dominique. Dom Robert Bintevin E. It's an X because I'm edgy. <laughs> She's so edgy. <laughs> so edgy. I love it. You can find me at uh, Quentin. The Quentin B. Webb? No, Quentin B. Webb. Quentin B. Webb. Ooh, she know. She know. It's because Quint- he asks us all the time. I'm like, I don't know how you don't know Quentin this. Quentin B. Webb <laughs> on Instagram. Amazing. Great episode, guys. Thanks for coming on.